I don't have to tell you that you've been called upon to sit as the jury on perhaps the most important murder case ever tried in this country. In any political assassination, ladies and gentlemen, almost as inevitably as death and taxes, there is always a chorus of critics screaming the word conspiracy before the fatal bullet has even come to rest. The evidence that will be presented at this trial will show that there is no substance to the persistent charge by these critics that Lee Harvey Oswald was just a patsy set up to take the fall by some uh, elaborate conspiracy. We expect the evidence, all of the evidence, to show that Lee Harvey Oswald, acting alone, was responsible for the assassination of John F. Kennedy. We expect the defense, in an anemic effort to deflect suspicion away from Mr. Oswald, to offer theories, speculation, conjecture, but not one speck of credible evidence that any other person or group murdered President Kennedy and framed Lee Harvey Oswald for the murder that they committed. As this trial unfolds, you will see how utterly preposterous the allegation of a frame-up is. The evidence of this trial will produce a, a, a vivid and a rather stark psychological portrait of Oswald as a deeply disturbed and maladjusted man. It will show him to be a fanatical Marxist who restlessly searched for a country to embody the Marxist dream. The evidence will show that on the morning of the assassination, November the 22nd, 1963, Oswald carried his weapon, a 6.5 millimeter Mannlicher Carcano rifle, into his place of employment at the Texas School Book Depository Building. The presidential motorcade was scheduled to pass right in front of that building that very noon. At 12.30 p.m., as the president's limousine drove slowly by, three shots rang out from the southeasternmost window on the sixth floor of that building, one of which penetrated President Kennedy's upper right back, exited the front of his throat, another entering the right rear of his head and exiting and shattering the right frontal area of his head. As the presidential limousine screeched away to Parkland Memorial Hospital, where he was pronounced dead, the president, his lifeblood gushing from his body, lay mortally wounded in his mm -hmm. wife Jacqueline's lap. Within minutes of the assassination, Oswald's rifle was found on the same sixth floor, the floor from which Oswald had brutally cut down at the age of only 46, the 35th president of these United States. The evidence will show that Oswald's rifle, to the exclusion of all other weapons, was determined by firearms experts to be the rifle that fired the two bullets that struck down President Kennedy. The evidence will further show that just 45 minutes after the assassination, Oswald, in frantic flight from what he had just done, shot and killed Dallas police officer J.D. Tippett, running from the scene of the murder to a theater where he was arrested and subdued after drawing his revolver on one of the arresting officers. Much more evidence, ladies and gentlemen, much more will be produced at this trial, irresistibly connecting Oswald and no other person or group to the assassination. I have every confidence that after you folks fairly and objectively evaluate all of the evidence in this case, you will find that Lee Harvey Oswald, and Lee Harvey Oswald alone, was responsible for the assassination of President John F. Kennedy. I have a note here which reads as follows, Your Honor, we have reached a unanimous verdict dated November 22, 1986, signed Jack Morgan, four person. Mr. Morgan, have you reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. If you would, please, if you'd just hand it to the marshal. You may be seated. All right, fine. Counsel, if you would, please, if you'd please stand. I'll ask Mr. Nelson, if he would, to please read the verdict. Verdict. We, the jury, find the defendant, Lee Harvey Oswald, guilty of the offense charged in one of the indictment. 